Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to do a quick review of Dawn by Eli Weisel. So, uh, this is a novel, it's the second book in the Night trilogy. And so, the first book, Night, is like a non fiction account of the author's experiences during the Holocaust. This is a novel, and it's set after the Second World War, but it follows a Holocaust survivor as he's in Israel. And, uh, well, let me read you the blurb here. So, the short novel Dawn, the second book in Eli Weisel's masterful Night trilogy, which begins with the unforgettable memoir Night and concludes with the acclaimed novel Day, previously titled The Accident, is a haunting meditation on guilt, moral ambiguity, and the justifications man makes to man for the act of murder. Elisha, a young Jewish Holocaust survivor now living as a terrorist in British-controlled Palestine, awaits Dawn when he has been ordered to kill a captive English officer. Caught between the manifold horrors of the past and the troubling dilemmas of the present, Elisha wrestles with guilt, ghosts and ultimately God as he waits the appointed hour for his act of assassination. A new preface by the author reflects on the enduring questions raised in Dawn and on the novel's place in this powerful trilogy. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go through and pick out a few of my highlights here. I do want to point out I buddy read this with Alex Black as well. So thank you Alex for having this buddy read with me. So I thought this little bit was, was pretty cool. Um... So uh, somebody is talking about his story and basically he feigned that he was dead and uh, they, you know, he says here, I refuse to eat or drink. When they slap my hands and face, I did not react. Dead men feel no pain and so they do not cry. After 48 hours, I was taken back to the asylum. Funny, isn't it? He said, death actually saved my life. Several days later, when I left the asylum, I saw that my hair had turned white, Job concluded. That's one of death's little jokes I put in. Death loves to change the color of people's hair. Death has no hair, it has only eyes. God, on the other hand, has no eyes at all. I thought this little bit was interesting as well. Um, so Ilana almost got captured. Uh, she's working for the resistance and she says, The English have no description of me, they know only my voice. One day they hauled in a whole group of women, myself among them. At the police station, a sound engineer compared each one of our voices to that of the mysterious announcer of the Voice of Freedom. Thanks to the fact that I had a heavy cold, I was quickly eliminated and four other women were detained for further questioning. Once more I was tempted to laugh, but the others were glum and silent. A cold, I thought to myself. And in this case it turned out to have more practical use than either faith or courage. And then we've got the narrator of this story here, and he says, I owe my life to a laugh. It was during one winter at Buchenwald. We were clothed in rags and hundreds of people died of cold every day. In the morning we had to leave our barracks and wait outside in the snow for as long as two hours until they had been cleaned. One day I felt so sick that I was sure the exposure would kill me, and so I stayed behind, in hiding. Quite naturally I was discovered and the cleaning squad dragged me before one of the many assistant barracks leaders. Without stopping to question me he caught hold of my throat and said dispassionately, I'm going to choke you. His powerful hands closed in on my throat and in my enfeebled condition I did not even try to put up a fight. Very well, I said to myself, it's all over. I felt the blood gather in my head and my head swelled to several times its normal size so that I must have looked like a caricature, a miserable clown. I was sure from one minute to the next that it would burst into a thousand shreds like a child's toy balloon. At this moment, the assistant leader took a good look at me and found the sight so comical that he released the grip and burst out laughing. He laughed so long that he forgot his intention to kill. And that's how I got out of it unharmed. It's funny, isn't it, that I, sh I, should, owe that I should owe my life to an assassin's sense of humour? And then we get to the bit with the, um, the English captain and they're kind of poking fun at him because even though he knows that he's about to die, he still has an appetite. He wants his last meal. We have this great quote from Alana as well. She says, war is like night. It covers everything. And then uh, Elisha meets the captain, the man he has to kill. And the captain asks his name. Elisha, I said. Very musical, he observed. It's the name of a prophet, I explained. Elisha was a disciple of Elijah. He restored life to a little boy by lying upon him and breathing into his mouth. You're doing the opposite, he said with a smile. And also I think it's just interesting that the captain feels sorry for the kid as well because he's so young, he's 18, 19, and the captain is like, I'm, I'm sorry for you, you know, having to take a man's life, even though it's his own life, which I thought was very moving. So yeah, I don't have a huge amount to say about this because again, it's a pretty short book, I think it's 82 pages, I would actually say it's a novella as opposed to a novel, but it's very well written, very philosophical, and um, I think it asked a lot of questions about what it means to be human, and it kind of showed both sides of war as well, it didn't portray either the Brits or the Israelis or the Palestinians, it didn't portray any of them as the good guys or the bad guys or the right ones or the wrong ones, it just showed the very human cost. So uh, yeah, I gave it a 3.75 out of 5, I thought it was pretty good 
and I will probably be reading Day, which is the third book in the trilogy. So if you fancy buddy reading that with me, and yourself as well, Alex, it may be me and Alex, and anyone else who wants to join in, let me know in the comments, and we'll set up a, you know, a little email thread, and we can chat about it. So there we have it, that's what I thought of Dawn by Eli Weisel. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.